Cause of death gamification, nice. So by the way, I just bought a algorithmic toy for my cat. What does that even mean? <laughs> like these words don't go together, like algorithmic toy? Because I don't want to say AI, because I think AI wording okay. is way too used in like marketing. You bought a blockchain mouse. <laughs> <laughs> a blockchain powered mouse. So it's a mouse. It's supposed to have AI in it, but actually just a little algorithm that sends different things. So it, so it sends the wall, so it doesn't like crash into into any wall. It sends where the cat is like touching him or not, and it sends like different kind of play. So for example, if the cat is like biting on it or like doing violent move with it, like it starts like running away. So it can actually just stay there or like in your uh, living room doing nothing. And then the cat is just like sniffing at it and it sends that so you can like start playing. That sounds pretty cute. Is it like uh, self-contained or is it uh, on Wi-Fi? So it's on Wi-Fi. So no, no, it's on Bluetooth. So meaning you have, uh, it's both. So basically you have a self-contained software well, like you can just like, you can just avoid the wall and do like a little thing. But like, if you want the full experience, you need to connect it to your phone and your phone have like different settings and like, you can like change between like different kind of play, et cetera, et cetera. Also your phone has like, like, like a remote. Then. Yeah, exactly. And you can also remote, like remote play with it. So it's also a little remote car. Can you program your own uh, play behaviors? No. There's no free API, and like that's killing me because the algorithm for uh, seeing the wall is not super good, and I'm pretty sure that I can do a better job. Well, maybe they're constrained because it has to fit in memory. Uh, yeah, maybe offline, but but I don't know. It's just pure stupid because, like for example, my uh, library has a little bit of a of a hinge, yeah, and it doesn't see the hinge, so it doesn't think that there's a wall. Do you know what kind of sensor it uses? Is it visual or...? I think it's infrared. Like, that would be the cheapest way. Which is a bit of a shame because it costs 150 bucks. Yeah, I think you can probably get something more custom and probably cheaper if you go some, if you build it yourself. But the, the thing with it, which I really like, it's very, very, very sturdy. Oh. Like, it can fall, it can be beaten, <laughs> like nothing happened to it. And which is kind of nice with a cat, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's probably hard to do handmade stuff of uh, all that kind of resilience. Yeah, but like they could open the fucking software. <laughs> <That's> not... <laughs> yeah. They could, everybody could, but that's not really what we do nowadays. That's not like how the world works now. But I mean, they won't lose anything because like their app is not a, isn't a paid app. Like you pay your fucking mouse for 150 bucks and that's pretty much it. So it could like just be open. Like it won't change anything to their market model. Well, it will change stuff like people will start to try and use it and then they have to support and document it. And it's mm. probably like there is little incentive for them to do that in the current uh, uh, way the world thinks. So yes, in an ideal world, everyone would have open APIs. But they, yeah. It's so much simpler to just close everything and say, fuck you, public. Give me 100 euros and go fuck yourself. Yeah, they, like, like they don't need to support the shit that their community is doing. Like, they actually don't need to. They can just say, well, it's open, do whatever you want. But then, like, if it's broken, it's broken. But haven't you been in your apartment and, like, it was a bit messy, but still livable. And you're like, oh, I don't, it would be good to do that, but I don't need to do that. And it would cost me effort. So why bother? And that's, like, path of least resistance. That's what company or anyone would do. I mean, if not incentivized properly. But I, I'm surprised that it's sturdy, so you should be happy about that. It sounds like the kind of stuff that would break easily. Yeah, that's true. But like, I actually bought it because I knew it was sturdy. Like, I, I read a lot of reviews. There was not that much review, to be honest, because not many people want to pay 200 bucks, like 150 bucks for a cat tie. But you can see the videos, and like, it seems sturdy at first, so that's why like, I was like, meh, maybe it's nice. 
But the, the problem is not the toy in itself. The problem is really the software. That can be fixed by you. If you had, if you had the motivation that you're lacking, just like the company has no motivation to open its API, you could do it. I mean, when I see my cat play more with his 20 cents cat toys and this 150 or cat toy, I'm a bit... That's surprised. exactly the answer to your question. Why doesn't the company open its API? Because people are buying it already, so why bother? This episode is brought to you by the intolerable boredom yet comforting familiarity of doing the same thing over and over again. I'm sure you've already seen some of their products available all over the world in a wide range of varieties. So next time your path crosses theirs, why not giving them a deeper appreciation? There's a thing I've been wondering for a while is... You know, Pokemon Go back in the days, a couple of years ago, was a huge success and made a lot of money. And usually when something like that happens, like Fortnite or League of Legends, you see copycats everywhere. Uh, and it's especially shitty copycat. Uh, but that doesn't seem to have happened for Pokemon Go. Or maybe I just like completely missed it, but I think so. I Can I look for it? So I... Like, why do you think that is? Like, the law of the market would would require there to be a lot of shitty copycats. So, f I, I have maybe like three ideas. First, Pokemon Go was successful for one main reason, because it was Pokemon. And the brand name is so important, I think, because it was it's created on mobile, so everyone has access to it. And... I really want to see the demographics of who was playing Pokemon Go, but I suspect that it would be older than we thought. So I think it was more 20 years old that just like play Pokemon when they were young. Yeah, it probably it probably worked a lot with the nostalgia factor. So it's basically 20 years old and something play less video games than younger people. I'm not sure. Play less video games on on gaming platform. Yeah, not on mobile. They all play video on mobile. So it was kind of a nice merging of two, like, okay, I only play games on mobile and there's this old Pokemon thing that I'm really fond of when I was younger. So maybe we can try it. And then that, so, and then that pushed the social aspect of, of it. It's like everyone remember how they loved Pokemon when they were younger and they started, so they start playing together. And it was actually a nice experience to play with, with your friend, like going outside and like looking for Pokemon. It was just, a nice experience, but I don't think like every every time you would talk to someone at that time. I can't really remember; it was kind of a long time ago. But it was not a good game. Like uh, no one thought that it was a good game. Like there was nothing to do. <laughs> no. So the main the main reason why I'm asking this question is because I mean it was pretty promising. I found it was kind of like a new genre of game that came up, and I was looking forward to the people who would like iterate and improve. But that never happened. So it 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 seemed to me like opening interesting doors that nobody followed, I guess. Why? Like, what's the interesting door? What I'm the most interested in is the relationship between the game world and the real world. Uh, it's the first. Well, there there was Ingress too, but Ingress. Well, it's pretty much the same thing, like shitty gameplay. But oh, apologies for all listeners who love Ingress. Uh, let, let's say like the gameplay is not very uh, rich. So uh, the 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 interest comes from the fact that it happens in the real world. It's the uh, so the type of this game is called ARG, which stands for alternate reality game or augmented reality game. It's kind of at the border of the two concepts, which can be a bit fuzzy. Uh, anyway, that's a whole topic I'm not an expert on. But uh, yeah, so using the, the real world as playground with the power of technology and video games seemed pretty promising and interesting and original. And that's the thing I, I found it brought to the table the most. So I think like maybe two things. Like the first thing is maybe it's expensive to do. <laughs> like I have absolutely no clue of the cost of, of development yeah. of that sort of game. And the second thing is with augmented reality. So the, like when we talk, I think like for the rest of the episode, when we talk about augmented reality for Pokemon Go, is really that link between the real world and the actual game. It's not about sending the Pokeball into the Pokemon with your camera. I think that was the most useless part of the game. 
and not that kind that interesting and everyone turned that off for battery so there's two concepts that are abbreviated into ARG and Pokemon Go uses both there's augmented reality game which uses your camera to place objects in the real world and there's the alternate reality games which are games that rely on the idea that it takes place in the real world uh, and that can be very abstract like for instance the there's a lot of ARG so alternate reality games that happened when uh, there's a new a new game released I think for Portal 2 for instance there were clues hidden in Portal 1 that link to GPS coordinates and like this kind of treasure hunts has been going on every now and then so this is typically what alternate reality games are and so I think this is the part of Pokemon Go you want to talk about. The part that uses the world as the playground, as opposed to the part that uses your camera as the vector. As the vector of playing. Yeah, because because for the camera, like let's just talk about the camera for five minutes so we can just complete the subject for the rest of the of the podcast. It's just I don't think the I don't think the technology is there yet. Like So the, the bit with the camera, I'm pretty confident that there is a lot of people trying to do it. Like Microsoft has HoloLens. Uh Apple is working on it quite a bit with our kit. Remember when uh, Nintendo came out with the 3DS and their camera the scanning tags? So there regularly is effort to, like, especially in Japan, to put your waifu in the real world. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's really the other part I'm interested in, the, the GPS and map part. Completely agree. Because I, I thought this was really cool. And that nobody seems to work on. First, that I don't think that's true. Like, there's a... well, not nobody. Yeah. No, but like, there's a huge uh, Harry Potter game that we actually use. <laughs> the same, uh, it's by the same company. <laughs> okay, they they are making a second game. Okay, well, a third game. Sorry, Ingress players. Apologies again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I I do think that there was at that point when Pokemon was completely insane and there was everywhere. I do think that company pushed like their their team to work on that, but I also think that they found out that it was really hard to do a good game. And we can say everything about like the video games company doing bullshit things just for money, but they actually tried their game with user. Like they have user session, like asking them like, oh, is it good? Have you do you have fun, etc. They don't want to spend money in a void. And I do think that without the right brand, you can't actually. Like they didn't find a way to do a good game. The only thing that I can think about, but that I, like that is already online, that is quite fun, is Treasure Hunt. I'm I'm pretty sure it's called Treasure Hunt. I'm not I'm not 100 percent maybe hidden secrets. I, I have no clue. Like, but one of these. Uh, I I would need to for you to look it up. I want to try that. Uh, so basically, what it is is just a treasure hunt in real life, and you get you get hints via the app, and you can put like coordinates and like share the information with like people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think there's also another app that you gave me where like people can put stuff in different yeah, locations. Yeah. So that's called geocaching. People okay. put stuff in location and like, leave a little riddle and you follow GPS coordinates and solve the riddle, but you don't gain anything besides the status of like putting your signature on it or your digital location, I guess. Oh, some of them are like little chests where they exchange garbage, I guess, like little tokens, little badges or whatever. So you take something and put something bad. It's a cute concept, really, but it doesn't like, it's not enough gamified to hook me. But I really want to check out your uh, your um, uh, treasure hunt app because I haven't seen a good one. Uh... Yeah, I don't think it's really good, but like I'm going to check. Okay, I haven't seen a live uh, a one with like live stuff that didn't seem deprecated or US only. <laughs> or maybe it's US only. Isn't maybe it? it's US only. Yeah, maybe I just read an article. I'm pretty sure I haven't tried it. I've just read an article oh. about it. So, but, but I mean, like in the same sense, there's like many apps that use a weak link between the real world and, um, and actual gaming. And like one of the biggest examples in the recent year, and like it was last year, that it was really, really, really big, is HQ Trivia. So HQ Trivia, I'm pretty sure that you don't know that, yeah. is a mobile game app where you need to show up at a certain time. So there was two sessions, I think one at 7 p.m. and one at 9 p.m., where like you would actually have a TV show host asking questions, and everyone in the app would be on at that time answering the question. And if you were to like answer, I don't know, I think it was 10 questions, you would actually win money. 
and you would share the money the money pool with everyone that actually seeks to answer to the trend question. And there would be a chat, so people would joke about the, the question, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that was super big in the US. And then it came to France, and it was not that big. Uh, uh, but like it was, all, it was also only in English, even when it came to France. So that might be why. That's why, yeah, probably. But talking about only geolocalization, I think it's again, it's really about technology. And I think when we will have AR glasses, it will be fun. But the the way it is now is you need to check your phone while working in the real world. And even if everyone does that now for like texting, et cetera, et cetera, it remove like, it's a bit weird because you're in a real space looking for fake information, but to have that fake information, you're just looking at your phone. And so like, obviously the link between the real world and the fake world is, is kind of thin. Like you could not be there and it would be the same thing. So I think when we will have a technology to actually superimpose information, then this kind of game will be super big and the gameplay could be super fun. But now it's just a bit sad. Do you th- don't you think that this the the technology when it uh, when it's good enough will just focus on scanning your surroundings and will not care at all about sending you on a quest to other locations? One of the cute points of Pokemon Go is that it actually incentivizes you to move <laughs> away from your location and really leverages GPS instead of just your visual field. Whereas I'm I'm getting the impression that the augmented reality scene is moving towards visual and completely neglecting GPS. Maybe because, maybe because of privacy or complexity or whatever. But um, it was very fun to play with GPS. I mean, yeah, it was fun but it can't really work can it like people well i'm i'm pretty sure maybe i'm wrong but pokemon go people use it for how long oh uh, there's still a there's still a pretty big community but the craze the craze was uh say three months yeah i don't think you can ask people to like move out of their home like it no but like it's a bit pretty... yeah, yeah that's true but uh on the other hand when i had to move out of my home i was really really happy to have something to do when i traveled when i had to go back to the countryside to see my parents that gave me like an extra objective and that gamified the whole thing that made it all the more pleasant uh so and so the, you, you can't really do all these treasure hunts thing without gps either no, I, I, I completely agree. No, but like, I agree. I'm just really, I, I thought about it a bit more and like just thinking about what, like with GPS, with a phone, like what could we do to have a better gameplay? And I don't think you can do that much if it's not linked to actual like AR glasses and like, like change the situation you are in in the location. Because like, if you can do that, then it can be super fun. Like, okay, go to Notre Dame and then you see it on fire and you need to team up with people to like remove the fire, whatever. Like you can do fun stuff. But if, if it's just GPS location and you and your phone, then like even thinking about that sort of thing, like event at a certain place and like link to this place, etc. Then it's really, I think it's really hard to make that entertaining. And actually, mm. beca- because also like, What's good with Pokemon Go that is not easily replicated is that you can do that everywhere. Meaning you go to the countryside, you can find Pokemon. And I think it's kind of easy to do a thing, for example, in Paris. And like, because there's a lot of monuments, there's a lot of, of like well-known plays. So you could link that to an actual story. But the problem with that sort of game is then it's only working if you are in Paris. And to do that at scale everywhere, then you remove the sense of story, of storyline. You can't really use a storyline. Yeah, because you don't really know where you are, right? <laughs> and you can't really do a story that can take place everywhere. So I have a counterpoint. Uh, this is a really great reason why you can't have some interesting PVE. Yeah. Uh, player versus environment for the people who don't, are not familiar with the, the term. Uh, but you might be able to still do PvP, like player interaction based stuff, although it requires several people to play. But uh, that reminds me that back in the days I had read a a very cute paper. Well, I only read the abstract, so maybe I should, I didn't find it again. But it's really promising about some kind of like 
AR, in the sense alternate reality uh, game, where they had people be like spies or stuff like that and send them on a mission to like uh, undermine each other. And so they had to go to locations and if there was something else, someone else from the game uh, on, uh, in there and they had to interact in such a way that, I don't know, uh, accomplished their objective. And I thought that was really cute. So I guess one of the reasons why you don't have that many player interaction in AR games is because, well, it might end up in fights. And I'm pretty impressed that Pokemon Go didn't, actually, didn't cause any violence or whatever. And you know why? Because even if someone takes your Pokemon, the Pokemon is still there for the other people. They, they, they designed it actually pretty well for, for that, to be conservative, uh, to, be, to have shared resources. And I guess maybe my ideal game based on player interaction like that is doomed to fail because, I mean, people would use real world violence or whatever and like that would be risky uh, but still that would be so fun i mean you made the counterpoint better than i could like i yeah. really feel like i want like my i yeah it could be super fun to be like two i don't know like two faction and like you need to go to that place to like even just go there and click on the button on your phone to like put a fake bomb or like put a fake thing, or like just retrieve information for the other faction and so that sort of things. But that could go wrong very, very, very quickly. So do you think that PvP is doomed on the uh, augmented uh, alternate reality game? I think PvP, I mean... It's risky, yeah, I guess. I mean, the thing that is good with Pokemon Go for PvP is that your PvP against players that are not there. Yeah, that's that's also probably why they took so long to roll it out, to roll out player interactions, stuff like that. But no. I mean, is this way we can't have nice things? I'm just thinking about a way that you can do player interaction without the risk of people killing people. <laughs> uh... Gamification gone wrong. <laughs> I gamified too hard because <laughs> of death. Gamification, nice. Uh... Because, for example, on Ingress, I didn't play that much, but Paul, a friend of ours, played quite a bit, and so he explained to me how it works. And basically, what you could do in, in Ingress is that you actually add neighbor to your faction, and you could put uh, you could put protection against other faction, or other faction could attack those neighborhood. So it's quite PV like Ingress is super PvP actually. Yeah, uh, it's always mediated by an object and asynchronous diffuses any kind of risk there's that's not really player interaction right that's yeah. player objective and player versus player through objective which is i guess one way you can shield against mishaps also yeah so the only way to actually do that would be weirdly enough virtual reality <laughs> you have a vr headset and a treadmill in your house recreating the old world just for people not to kill themselves when they play. Well, I love playing this kind of game. There's a cute game of uh, like quiz that brings you to a random location on Google Street View and you have to guess where it is. You ha you can move around a little bit. That is such a fun quiz. I don't know, Google Map game uh, in VR, I've tried. And I saw it would be not game, but like just like Google Street. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it gets old pretty fast when you don't have like an objective. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole thing about being there and just like looking at the screen. But I saw that in VR, it would be a bit more... I don't know. I, I saw that in VR, watching a location would be very close to actually going to the location. And I don't know, like it isn't. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by the letter U. The letter U is the 21st letter in the Latin alphabet. It is present in more than three words in the English language. And the best part is, you can use it too. Chances are, the letter U is already somewhere near you. Maybe even in you. So... Let's say, where did you go in uh, in AR, in VR? A lot of places. I, I went like to the Machu Picchu. I went to like a lot of places in Japan. Okay. And so you think that uh, going there in per like going there in person wouldn't be as pointless? Clearly not. Why though? I mean, like I really think that the the journey part 
the is journey important. Path is important. The, the hardship, it's, it's too easy. Uh, and also, no, and also the VR now is really not perfect. Like it's pixel, yeah, okay, not okay, pixel yeah. as, as fuck, but like it's fine. It's clearly not perfect. And you, you don't have crystal clear sound. You don't have the wind. You don't have the smell. You don't have the, you know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. But I'm talking about like a conceptual difference, not uh, a difference in level. So if if you add perfect VR with all senses, uh, with all senses taken into account, would that be different? And I think it would probably because the Machu Picchu has no value <laughs> in itself. It only has the value that you construct it, to. and if you make it accessible instantaneously. It completely destroys all the construction, all the social construct around it. I think so as well. So that's the value you get from going somewhere with people or from like anticipating and traveling. That's a, that's a weird feeling to try and travel on Google Earth because like you're just there and it's interesting. It kind of it kinda reminds me of uh, Brave New World of Huxley and how they... Uh, they said like, oh, we, we made the drug too perfect and people were happy all the time. So we, we forced them to incentivize the travel to idealize other locations. I, I couldn't remember that part, but that's... Really? That, that was the cutest part ever? They, they, it's kind of like the Matrix. They're talking about the failed pre- previous experiments and they're like, oh, people were too happy and they weren't leaving their houses. So we needed to make sure that they wanted to travel and, uh, the, and we artificially uh, incentivized tourism. No, but like I, I've read that book maybe ten years ago now, so I think that's why I remember it's a really great book, but I don't remember that much details. Well, I, I, I don't think anyone's ever done an analysis of Huxley and Pokemon Go. And we haven't yet, actually. Well, we have like the part where they say like, oh, life wasn't interesting is when you play Pokemon Go with a GPS spoofer and you can get anywhere instantly. It's, it's a bit boring. Uh, that that I I never understood. Like people that actually played the game while at their place with a GPS proofer. It was just like, you're defeating the uh, purpose of the game. It's, right? the, it's the people who disagree with you to, uh, about the fact that this game has an interesting gameplay in itself. They were interested in the game and getting better at it and getting more experience. Yeah, but that's, that, that's the whole discussion about even in the normal Pokemon game. You could let the action replay and have all Pokemon, but it's a bit useless because the whole purpose of the game is to actually catch up. Well, yeah, you, you can hack any game to be super good at it, but the whole point of the game is to have constraints to create an experience. It kind of blows my mind that like you're there mashing uh, some keys. Like if you abstract, if you completely forget the abstraction, you're just seated in a chair mashing five buttons. But it's the, the important part is like the whole world that stems out of the constraints of the software and even more in mmorpg like i think people do farm and don't find that funny at all just to have like like in game in game money and the money is has value only by the effort put in it i think like that's the most insane part of it now is that for example on guild wars 2 i think there's a lot of people that just farm without having even a bit of fun to have like in-game money but they could actually buy the in-game money and I'm pretty sure that they would earn more money just working in a bullshit job. Yeah, but that's not a game. That's work. That's like the opposite of a game. Yeah, but like if you don't have fun while playing game, isn't that just work? <laughs> so there's a tenuous uh, question here and I, I've read some pretty good stuff on the subject. I think there's a PBS Idea channel episode about like when gaming becomes work. But the whole point of gaming is this artificial value created through constraints. And if you cheat your way out of that value, then like it's you, you could hack the client of the game and artificially blow up. Well, it doesn't really work for MMORPG because you have the server that plays the judge and enforces constraints. But if I start like Metal Gear Solid, I can tweak the game and make me give me like infinite health and infinite ammo. But then the game becomes pointless because you're just like going forward. And so the whole point of the game is to imposing constraints and difficulty and hardship on you. And do, do they do they really not enjoy the least bit of it? Uh, some part of them must, otherwise they wouldn't. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like a lot of person, I'm actually not sure. Like I think that like a lot of people are just trying to spend time, and it's a good way to spend time without thinking about the purpose of what you're spending your time on. Because at the end, you have a nice arrow or sword or whatever. And yeah, and I do think that 
it's like MMORPG and all these games that are basically a lot of farming. Well, for people that are not playing farming, it's just doing the same thing to like have um, to have a reward. And all these games, I think, are really created for for entertainment and like more in the term entertainment, more in the term of not thinking about your life than entertainment on the term of having fun. If we're willing that to Pokemon Go, yeah. I, because you're linking because you're linking the real world with what you're doing, maybe you have a better sense of what you're actually doing, meaning spending time. Because you're walking in the street and because okay. you're playing with friends that are with you or whatever, maybe the entertainment part of I'm just passing time is harder to achieve. So for it to be actually enjoyable, it actually needs to be enjoyable. Okay, could it... Could it be that the the space uh, using the real world as a space of play is detrimental to the dis dissociation function of gaming to take you away from your daily life? So that's why there's no game uh, like Pokemon Go. Uh, okay, what like have we finished completely on Pokemon Go? I think my personal conclusion is that it's really hard to make a GPS game, <laughs> not the least of which because you need the uh, social engagement in people. So that's always like the hard thing when you're developing something by yourself. It's very hard to make it uh, story driven if you want to be location oblivious. You need to work everywhere. And it's also very hard to make something without people killing each other. So there's a fair amount of challenges that probably explain why people have been warm about it. But I still think it's a very uh, exciting field that is... I mean, if, if we had like the same amount of thinking that goes into any kind of gaming genre that goes into this new genre, I think, I'm sure we can come up with something amazing. Yeah, maybe the future with AR goggles or whatever will help with that. And I think that's a good wrap-up, actually. As, as always, uh, go to the subreddit to leave questions, comments, links of stuff we want to, you, you want us to check out, questions, ideas for other episodes, or critics also. We are very open to, <laughs> to any kind of review. Even bad review. <laughs> Even bad review. But do put us five stars on YouTube, on uh, iTunes, right? It's important. I don't know. Everybody says that. Uh, so there's that, and you forgot to put the link, to say the link of the subreddit. It's easy, it's not dailypodcast.com. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that works. Okay, bye. Bye.